Hello everyone, and welcome back to another adventure in electronics, robotics, and communication systems, where it's now time to revisit that Linux-powered smartphone, and of course that would be the Pine Phone. To briefly recap that first video, this is a Linux-powered smartphone, and it focuses on configurability and open documentation. This is a product of the Pine64 company, and the company itself does actually encourage their users to make modifications and repair the phone as they see fit. The schematic for the phone is posted on the official website, and this is where you can also find those replacement parts. PinePhone hardware has been revised over the years, beginning with Projects Anakin and Don't Be Evil, and the exact version I received appears to be version 1.2b, as in Bravo. And to be clear, this is a separate series from the Pro version. Pine64 handles the hardware design, and it curates its own official documentation. The Linux distribution and the apps that run on top of it are going to be another matter. These are provided by the Linux community itself, so in my case, if I have issues with the operating system, it is best for me to report those to that Linux project itself. By default, the phone I purchased arrived with Manjaro ARM, and it uses the Plasma Mobile desktop environment. If I'm being honest, this operating system, or the distribution, is a bit of a mixed bag, and there were technical problems that I'll get into later, although many were fixed by doing updates. Performance-wise, the processor is an all-winner A64 quad-core, and this does have an integrated graphics processing unit, or GPU. The A64 itself is based on an ARM Cortex A53 and ARM's ARCH64 instruction set. In other words, any operating system you try to use is going to need ARM compatibility in order to work in this platform. Wireless is provided by a Realtek Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module, and the cellular radio is a Quectel LTE Category 4 cellular modem. Regarding its computing power, the official wiki page suggests that this is comparable to a Raspberry Pi 3, but it's fair to say that the GPU on the Pine phone is slightly weaker, which I think squares with my own experience using both platforms. This is a noticeable limitation, since the graphical interface is going to have a little bit of lag compared to a entry-level Android phone. The image quality from the front and rear cameras also has some problems with limited color fidelity. It's a bit hard to tell if this is happening at the hardware level or at the application level, but because the Megapixels app seems to have a limited number of configurations, I am assuming for now that this is software related. Finally, compared to my other entry-level smartphones, the PinePhone screen seems more susceptible to cuts, abrasion, and a few people even report that their LCDs are being delaminated, although I haven't seen any sign of this happening myself. The good news is that the phone is extremely configurable and repairable, applications and the operating system itself can be completely replaced, and doing so only requires reflashing the micro SD card, which is entirely optional. Once you remove the battery guard and charge the battery itself, the phone pretty much just works out of the box and you could just use the default operating system for the life of the phone. Now, in that previous video, I did get some good feedback that post-market OS and the Flash environment were probably improvements on Manjaro ARM with Plasma Mobile, so let me know if you have another suggestion. Otherwise, I probably am going to go forward with post-market OS, and I'll probably run that one off the micro SD card and leave Manjaro ARM in the phone's internal storage. And by the way, just doing even a fraction of this stuff would probably void the warranty on any Android or iOS phone. And I'm pretty sure we all know by now that a lot of these phones come with prepackaged bloatware that you can't get rid of, and even if you don't even use it, some of them just continue collecting your data. I'm assuming most of us are Windows users, but if you're trying to get started in Linux and you are okay with using the terminal, you can find a short list of the commands I used most often in my initial two weeks of using the phone. I think the hardware and the documentation are pretty much on point, but I encountered a fairly serious problem with Manjaro ARM, and I was only able to fix it by logging in through SSH. I don't think most consumers are willing to do that, so I really consider this a secondary phone, a phone that I basically use every day, but do not yet depend on. I would say my experience has been mostly positive, and in the near future, I do plan to purchase a second Pine phone. Thanks again for visiting, and if you find this useful, be sure to like and share the video. This is a small channel, so of course any feedback you're able to leave is going to have a large impact. Stay posted for the next one, and as always, have a great year!